Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on how to avoid grammatical errors. 20 rules for using English nouns correctly. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel, you will be notified instantly. Let's dive into the lesson right away. Although nouns are simply naming words, they can be easily misused in English sentences. You know, we are, we, most English users know exactly what nouns are. They are the commonest uh, word classes because they are naming words. Why are we going to look at them in this video? We are going to look at them because they are easily misused. And when they are misused, they give rise to ungrammatical expressions. So one major way to avoid grammatical expressions is to, I mean, one way to avoid grammatical errors is to learn the rules for using English nouns. Because hardly you make any sentence or you construct any sentence without including a noun. And when you include a noun and you don't use the noun correctly, then you break grammatical rules and you actually uh, you distort your, your communication, all right? Now, such grammatical errors associated with the wrong use of nouns can be avoided by, by learning the rules for using nouns correctly. That's what we want to do. Let's start right away. Rule number one, countable nouns can be used with the indefinite article. And they can have a plural form. For example, a book, a chair, a man. You can talk of books, chairs, men. For example, there is a book on the table. All right, there is a book on the table. So in that case, you are using the definite article here and you are using the indefinite article here. There is a book on the table, all right? So, but look at the second sentence. Books are usually kept on shelves. When you use the plural form, you are not under any obligation to use a determiner. You may or may not use determinants. Now you look at the third example, you will find the books on the shelves. Now we have used the definite article here because we are referring to a book or we are referring to books that are already known to both the speaker and the listener, all right? So, uh, the, uh, and shelves also refer to, you know, shelves already known to the speaker and the listener. So these are rules that govern the use of countable nouns, all right? Rule number two, an uncountable noun has only one form, not singular and plural form. So it can be used with or without a determiner. Now, when we look at countable nouns, we discover that there are those nouns that can be pluralized and that can be singularized. But when we look at an uncountable noun, it refers to something you cannot count. So you cannot pluralize them except you use partitives, which is another rule we are going to look at. Now, let's look at examples. Give me water to drink. You cannot say give me a water or give me waters to drink because water is not is uncountable. But you can say give me some water to drink, some water to drink. You can talk of much water, a lot of water, plenty of water, little water, and so on. Now, it is wrong to say a water 
And then all the uncountable nouns are advice. When you hear people saying an advice, you see that they are uh, using ungrammatical expression. You cannot say a rice, a furniture, or advices. I just want to give you an advice. That is ungrammatical. You can't talk of an advice or advices because advice is uncountable. Rices, furniture, all these are, you know, wrong grammatical usages. You, you don't pluralize an uncountable noun in that way. All right? Now, rule number three, you only pluralize uncountable nouns by using partitives. Partitives are words or phrases that show a part or quantity of something. For example, uh, you can talk of two slices of bread. It's wrong to talk of two breads. Give me a bread or give me two breads. No, you can use the partitive slice, a slice of bread or slices of bread, a pinch of salt or pinches of salt, a piece of meat or pieces of meat, a drop of water or drops of water, a bit of information or bits of information, an item of furniture or items of furniture, a piece of jewelry or pieces of jewelry, a loaf of bread or loaves of bread, and so on and so forth, all right? Now, rule number four, when an accountable noun is used as the subject of a verb, the verb is singular, all right? For example, honey is sweet. Honey is sweet. Honey is uncountable. So it must take a singular verb. You cannot say honey are sweet because you will break the rule of concord. The rule of concord states that a singular subject requires a singular verb. And so when we analyze this sentence A, then we discover that this is a singular subject, this is the subject, and this is the verb, then this is the complement. So we regard this as S1 and V1. S1 refers to singular subject, V1 refers to singular verb. Now, example B, the money has been paid into the bank. Because money is uncountable, then the verb is singular, has been. Again, water is essential. Because water is uncountable, it takes the singular verb. So that is the rule. Uncountable noun, uh, every uncountable noun is used as the subject of a, uh, a verb. When it is used as a subject of a verb, the verb must be singular. That's the rule. Rule number five, some invariable nouns ending in S take singular verb. For example, news, Brussels, Wales, United States, United Nations, Athens, mathematics, physics, economics, linguistics, classics, measles, rashes, rickets, etc. Now you may get confused when you know the, the rule for pluralizing a noun, that to pluralize a noun, you add S. So, but then here you have uh, some nouns that already end in S and you think that they are plural, but then you get it wrong. For example, news. The news is that the governor has died, is. Because news is such a noun, it is called an invariable noun. It ends in S, all right? It's like when we talk of irregular verbs. So these are irregular nouns. They don't follow the, 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 the regular uh, rule, okay? So news is singular, all right? So it takes a singular verb. So it is wrong to say the news are, no. You cannot say the news are that the governor has died. No, the news is, all right? The same thing applies to Brussels, 
Wales is, United States is a country, United Nations is, mathematics is, physics is, linguistics is my favorite subject, is, all right? Measles is, rashes is, all right? So singular, even though they end uh, with an S. Now rule number six, some abstract nouns are uncountable when used in a general sense, but countable in a particular sense. For example, Mike hasn't got enough experience for the job. So experience here is an abstract noun and it can be used uh, in a singular sense. It can also be used in a plural sense. Now, in this example A, Mike hasn't got enough experience. Here, experience is used as uncountable. Now, then B, it was a strange experience. So when we are talking about specific incidents, all right, when we use experience to refer to specific incidents, then we make them uh, countable. And so we can singularize or pluralize them. It was a strange experience. So we can talk of strange experiences as well. Then example C is about time. Time waits for nobody. It's uncountable when you refer to time. You can't count time. But then if we use it in the sense in example D, the couple had a good time. So when we are referring to a specific uh, instance, all right, of the use of time, then we make it uh, countable. The couple had a good time, you know? So you can say they had good times together, good times or a good time. Then here you are referring to, is to some specific experiences or instances when they spend time together, all right? So I want you to take note of these special usages and that is why we are looking at uh, this, uh, these rules in this video, just to expand your knowledge of the English language, to uh, help you to enrich your knowledge of the, of the use of English. So you also avoid making some grammatical blunders that a lot of English users make. Now, rule number eight, uncountable nouns are sometimes used in the plural form to convey specific meanings. For example, you know that water is uncountable, but then we can pluralize water to give it a different meaning. Look at the meaning we are giving water in example A, waters. We use this to refer to rivers, lakes, sea, ocean, etc. When you say on Nigerian waters or on American waters or on British waters, we are referring to the different uh, sources of water like river, rivers, lakes, and so on. Now, a similar thing happens when we pluralize work. You know that work is uncountable, but when we add S, we give it a special meaning. When we talk of works, then we are referring to, you know, the books written by an author, the music, the paintings, the art produced by some, uh, some, some authors or some artists. So we can talk, of, talk about the works of Chinua Achebe, the works of uh, Amanda Adichie, the works of, all right? So then the same thing applies to fish. Fish, you know, when we refer to fish as, uh, as you know, referring to the stuff we eat is uncountable. But when we talk of fishes, then we are referring to different species of fish, such as shark, tilapia, catfish, and so on. So you can talk of many fishes in the river, different types of fish, all right? So that is when you pluralize uh, some of these nouns to convey specific meanings, all right? So let's now move on to 
rule number nine, some nouns can be both countable and uncountable. For example, Rose likes coffee, uncountable. When you talk of the liquid you drink, the coffee you drink, is, it is uncountable. But then you can say, as in the example B, can I get you a coffee? You may have had people talking, talking about a coffee. Can I get you a coffee? In this case, you are referring to a cup of coffee. So it is countable. Now, example C, get the idea down on paper. Paper as material is uncountable. But you can say, as in example D, candidates must answer two questions from each paper. Now, like a kind of exam questions or, you know, a set of printed questions in an exam. You can count them, paper one, paper two, paper three. You can say we, are, we had two papers today. So in that case, you are referring to uh, that kind of paper. But the other one that refers to material, of course, you can talk of a sheet of paper, but not papers, all right? So you need to understand uh, the sense in which you are using a noun. Then rule number 10, all right, sorry. So rule number 10, <clears throat> a collective noun takes a singular verb when the reference is to a group acting in a collective fashion, and it takes a plural verb when the reference is to members of a group acting as, a, as single individuals. For example, in example A, you can say a new family has moved in next door. A new family, you, you know, a new family has. In this case, you are looking at the family as a unit. Uh, you acting in a collective fashion together. You refer to them as one group together. So you use a singular verb. But look at example B, the family are always fighting among themselves. The family are, in this case, you are using the singular, uh, you are using the plural verb, the same family. You are not even talking of families. You are, you are referring to the same collective noun, family, the group. But here you are referring to them, not as a singular group, but as individuals that make up the group you know, taking action on their individual capacities. So you said the family are always fighting among themselves. So a collective noun can be used as a sing with a, a, in a singular sense. It can also be used in a plural sense. And this you ought to understand. Now, rule number 11, let's uh, go to rule number 11. Pluralia tantum. <clears throat> now, this is a grammatical concept, and uh, it refers to nouns that only occur in the plural and take plural verbs. Example, areas, amends, archives, arms, auspices, bowels, dregs, earnings, fireworks, funds, quarters, regards, particulars, remains, riches, savings, Thanks, etc. Now, for example, areas of salaries we are paid to them, not was paid. So these these are pluralia tantum. It does just the, their behavior. They end in s and they are used as plural. They are different from the invariable nouns we mentioned earlier, such as news ending in s but used as singular. Here, we are dealing with a different set of nouns ending in S and then behaving as plurals all the time. So every time you use the word areas, you use a plural verb. Another example is earnings. Earnings are the net benefits of a company. You cannot say earnings is, all right? So that is exactly the way this, uh, nouns that you know belong to this group called pluralia tantum. That's the way they are used. Okay. 
Sorry. So let's now get to uh, rule number 12, what we call summation plurals. These are nouns referring to tools and articles that consist of two equal parts joined together. And they can be used with partitives such as a pair of scissors, three pairs of trousers, etc. All right? So you cannot say, give me a scissors. You, you, you must always say a pair of scissors because they always come in two. So when you look at nouns like that, you always use a partitive with them. Don't say a trouser. Always say a pair of trousers. Don't say a spectacles. Say a pair of spectacles, a pair of pants, a pair of jeans, a pair of pajamas, a pair of pliers, a pair of knickers, a pair of shorts, and so on and so forth. All right? So each time you omit the partitive used with this summation plurals, you always commit a grammatical blunder. That's why this video is very important. It teaches you how to avoid a lot of grammatical errors that most English users make. Now, rule number 13, some nouns ending in ES can be treated as singular or plural. For example, you can talk of one series of lectures, a series of lectures, two series of lectures, or many series of lectures. You can take, talk of a race species of beetle or many species of dogs. So these are nouns that you have some measure of freedom. You can use them with the singular, you can use them with the plural, all right? So you make the decision. And also depending on the sense in which you are using them at a particular time. Then rule number 14. Okay, yes, we are. Uh, <clears throat> We are at the right number, rule number 14. The, num the noun modified by the S genitive may be omitted if the context makes its identity clear. For example, my bag is bigger than Regina's. Now, instead of saying Regina's bag, in order to avoid repetition, instead of saying my bag is bigger than Regina's bag, because it is already, the meaning is implied, then we can omit the, uh, the noun because it's modified by uh, the genitive S. For example, you can say, I shall be at the dentist's, instead of saying, I shall be at the dentist's office, all right, or the dentist's clinic, or as the case may be, all right? So you can omit the noun, when modified uh, by the S genitive, all right? Rule number 15, in a double genitive, an of genitive can be combined with the S genitive. Well, this is getting a little bit complicated, but let us simplify this by giving examples. A, a friend of the lawyers has arrived. You see, a friend of the lawyers has arrived. So that is exactly a friend of the lawyers. If you are talking of your own friend and you use of, you must say a friend of mine. You cannot say a friend of me, all right? You, can, you must say a friend of mine. If I'm talking to you, I can say a friend of yours, not a friend of you, all right? Then example B, a daughter of Mrs. Okafor's has arrived. Not a daughter of Mrs. Okafor. You, uh, you must add the S genitive. It's a double. It's called a double genitive, all right? So in this case, you combine the of genitive with the S genitive. Example C, any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. Any son of Mr. Balogun's. Well, the S is missed here. Um, it's omitted, sorry. And any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. All right. So now rule number 16. Some temporal nouns can take the S genitive 
For example, a month's pay, a week's holiday, today's business, a moment's thought. So, you know, some temporal now, you know, they are actually abstract now, but you can uh, give them the S genitive. A month's pay, a week's, you know, holiday, today's business, all right? Okay, so now let's uh, go to rule number 17. When more than, I mean the expression more than is used with a number, the number that comes after more than determines the verb. For example, in A, more than two teachers are required because you are talking of plural. If the plu if a plural noun comes after more than, then it takes a plural verb. If a singular verb comes after more than, it takes a singular verb. Uh, I mean, if a plural noun comes after a more than, it takes a plural noun, a, a plural verb. If a, plur, a, a singular noun comes after a, a more than, it takes a singular verb. Now, A is where we have a plural noun coming after more than. More than two teachers. Two teachers are the plural nouns. More than two teachers required. Then B, we see a plural, a, a singular verb coming after more than. More than one teacher is required. So here we are, we are, we are uh, I want to explain what this is about. This is, uh, this uses what we call the, the law of proximity. Proximity means nearness, all right? So here we are talking about the, the subject that comes nearer to the verb, controls the verb. Here we have two teachers, are required. Here we have one teacher, is. All right, so you can see this. You can see this. Two teachers are, one teacher is. So when you have more than, then what comes after the more than will determine the verb. I hope this is clear, the law of proximity. So rule number 18, when every is followed by a plural noun, you know the, the you know, every. When every is followed by a plural noun, the verb is plural, but when it is followed by a singular noun, the verb is singular. So it is a bit similar to what we discussed before. Let's look at example A, every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy carry a bonus of an extra carton. Every 50 cartons. So you see, this appears, you know, on grammatical on the surface using every and then pluralizing, you know, but it is logical. Every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy carry. So a singular a singular verb here carry. But B, every carton of spaghetti you buy carries because it is carton here. All right, so that's exactly the way it is. Morning in progress. Now, rule number 19, when a number of is used, usually with a plural noun, it takes a plural verb, but when the number of, when you have the definite article D, the other one you have indefinite article a number of the, then you know it takes a plural but when you have the number of then it takes a singular verb for example a number of robbery suspects have been arrested now take note of a number of robbery suspects then have plural verb but when you say the number, the number of lunatics has 
increase because we are looking at the number, a definite number. It's no longer plural. But when you have a number of robbery suspects, you are looking at, you know, many suspects. But when you are talking of the number, you are looking at a definite number. And that number, whether it is one or two or three, the number, it has increased in our society. So take note of this. Then the last but not the least rule number 20. Nominalized adjectives used as noun phrases usually take a plural verb, but cannot be pluralized by adding S. For example, the poor, all right? You, you talk of the poor. When we talk of nominalization is when you use an adjective like poor, then you add the definite article. It becomes a noun phrase. The poor are there in all sections of our society. So it takes a plural verb, yet you can't pluralize. You can't say the poor. You can't say the poor. No. You must say the poor. All right. And then you cannot say the poor is. The poor are referring to a group of people. All right. The second example, the blind, the beautiful, the ugly, the bad, the good, the strong, the wise, the foolish, the weak, the righteous, the wicked, you know, and so on and so forth. These are called nominalizations. Nominalized adjectives behave in this way. Well, this is where we are going to draw the curtain in today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and share it with your friends and relations. We have been looking at how to avoid grammatical errors by looking at the 20 rules for using English nouns correctly. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you are new to this channel and have not yet uh, subscribed to the channel, this is the appropriate time for you to make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel you will be instantly notified i want to say a big thank you to all of you for being part of today's episode i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye bye for now and remain blessed meanwhile if you check the description section you will find some uh, free pdf that you will uh, that you can uh, receive there. I have a PDF, a free ebook in PDF form that you can you can receive. You know that will help you uh, on English grammar. You will also find a book I have written, which actually contains all the things I've ever been uh, teaching on this channel. And if you want to have that book, it is right there. Uh, you can just click and it you will be taken to the book uh, page where you will learn more about the book and you can uh, you can get your own grab your own copy if you are interested there are also various um, uh, various uh, ebooks that have to do with you know how to make money online you will also find them in the description section there are other opportunities you can also visit my website www.englishclassesonline.com.ng you will find quite a lot you, you know you everything virtually whatever you are looking for uh, in terms of english you will find them there and other opportunities exist for learning and earning, you will really not regret visiting my website, www.englishclassesonline.com.ng. So see you in the next video. Bye bye for now. Remain blessed. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about
about new videos click on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you